Hi everyone, welcome to the Science Addicted channel. Today I'm going to present you some tips and tricks that should be useful for any beginner who is interested in molecular docking technique. So one of the most important rules, and I chose to be the first one, is garbage input, garbage out. Needless to say that good, in good input structures are an absolute must for a precise and reliable uh, research result. What we also must know is that fast docking methods have various simplifications implemented both in the searching algorithm and in the scoring functions as well. So for a very brief presentation of these, please check out my last video. As I mentioned, um, because of these simplifications, docking methods are not meant to and can't find the local energetic minima for the input structure. The input structure needs uh, need to be in their most stable condition. They need to be in their energetic minima. And uh, what we also uh, should know is that docking methods have the two important input structures, uh, the ligand on one hand and proteins on the other hand. So in case of ligands, uh, we can use semi-empirical or quantum chemistry optimization methods as implemented in various software tools such as Mopac, Gamus, or Gaussian. Some of these are open source and uh, free to use for academic purposes. Uh, proteins, on the other hand, they uh, are often used from the PDB database and uh, they are usually in a good uh, optimal structure. However, it is a good practice to perform some molecular mechanics energy minimization, such as steepest descent or conjugated gradient. And these algorithms are implemented in also some of the open source programs, uh, such as OpenBubble or Gromax. The second point, but equally as important, is the protonation state of the protein amino acids. Just one example is the histidine, which can have multiple charges depending on the pKa values. Uh, and we must know that histidine is often involved in ligand interactions, so it can be either a proton donor or acceptor. Um, so before docking, it is crucial to know its protonation state. But unfortunately, this is not always very straightforward and uh, the charge of histidine uh, is not always uh, directly known from the X-ray structure of the protein downloaded from the PDB database. So in these cases, extensive literature search of the target protein is uh, necessary. Also, the charge of the terminal amino acids should be uh, addressed. This is why, for example, here, if there are um, chain disruptions on the protein chain, it is important to add uh, non-polar methyl or acetyl groups to neutralize the otherwise incorrectly charged terminal amino acid. And we often call this uh, capping the terminal amino acid. So similarly to the second point, I would like to emphasize the importance of correctly assigning the protonation state of the ligand as well. It is at least as important, if not more important than the previous point. It is crucial, especially within the binding interface, in order to accurately predict the correct binding mode and ultimately the binding affinity. Assigning uh, the incorrect protonation state uh, will further alter the uh, state of the hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, which will limit the correct prediction of the protein ligand interactions. Not to mention that an incorrect protonation will affect the 3D structure of the ligand, as you can see in the images and the short uh, video clips below. So here below we can see the benzamidine, which is wide, widely used a small ligand uh, to test out uh, some docking methods and due to the positive charge and the electron delocalization seen in the Lewis, uh, Lewis structure, actually the 3D uh, structure of the ligand is planar. 
However, if we don't account for the positive charge, then the bond between the benzene ring and the amidine group will become flexible and thus will generate some incorrect uh, structural artifacts. For the fourth point and the last one in today's video, I would like to highlight the importance of the water molecule as a structural element uh, in docking. Water is uh, very often forgotten in computational projects, but nowadays the research concerning the importance of this small molecule is extensive, so you should also check if there are any stable water molecules in the crystal structure you want to study. It is widely accepted in the literature that computational prediction of water structure helps the optimization of drug binding. It is also known that water molecules mediate the binding of ligands of any sizes. So when downloading the PDB structure, you should check if there are any conserved water molecules in the binding site. Sometimes through molecular dynamics, you can see the molecules being displaced during the binding process. Here, in the case of amantadine, a binding process to the influenza M2 transmembrane proton channel, uh, the displacement of two water molecules can be seen. Concluding with that, I would like to highlight that uh, the precise understanding and prediction of ligand binding are essential in drug design projects. So I would appreciate if you let me know in the comment section if this video was at all helpful to you and um, what uh, steps, what practical tips were you aware of, what was new to you. I'm curious to know what other topics you would like me to cover. So in the description of the video, you can find the links to the programs and softwares I mentioned during the video. And uh, with all that, thanks for watching.